Hey everyone, this is Theo from Parkablocks.com. Welcome to another tech review. Today we are going to check out the XP Pen Artist 12 Pen Display. This is a review unit that was sent over from XP Pen. Now my review will be a bit long, so if you want to save some time, maybe you want to check out the text review that I have already written. The content in the text review and this video review is exactly the same. The link is in the video description below. Today's video will focus on the drawing performance of this pen display on both Mac and Windows with the various graphic drawing apps that I use. By the way, last week I created an unboxing video for this where I talked about all the items that are included, so I'm not going to go through them again. Today I'm going to talk a bit more about the design and the screen and the colors. The XP Pen Artist 12 is one of the smaller pen displays that XP Pen is selling. The previous model, the small model, was the Artist 10S, which has been discontinued if I'm not wrong. So this is now upsized by 2 inches. The actual dimension is actually 11.6. The resolution is 1080p. So on such a small screen, the 1080p resolution still looks sharp enough. Colors are quite all right. Viewing angles are pretty decent. I have already color calibrated this screen to match the colors to my external monitor and I got a readout of 92% sRGB color support and 68% Adobe RGB. So the colors on this is quite decent. You probably do not need any color calibration out of the box because the colors already look all right. Now, this being a pen display means that you do need to connect this to your computer in order to use it. This is actually a monitor that you can draw on. Even though it has the form factor of a tablet, it's very thin, this is not a tablet. But because this is so thin, if you want to bring this around to your office and back home, it's very easy to do so. Build quality is fantastic. I like the matte surface finishing, but this time around they are using a glossy anti-glare screen protector. The previous model, the Artist 13.3, it uses a matte screen protector that I prefer. There is some compromise with matte screen protector because it affects sharpness, but with clear screen protector, um, images are sharper, but when you're drawing on it, it's a bit more slippery. But still, I think it offers a good amount of control, just that I prefer to draw on matte screen protector because there is the paper-like feeling. On the side here, we have six physical shortcut buttons, three at the top, three at the bottom, and this time around, instead of the dial thing, they have a touch bar here where you can swipe up and down to change uh, certain settings. You can assign specific keyboard shortcuts to the buttons or functions uh, to the buttons, uh, same with the touch bar as well. On the left side, this is the cable that connects to the computer. The cable splits into three on this end, two USB and one HDMI. There's this red USB here that says connect with power adapter. Now if your USB port is providing sufficient power to power up your pen display, you may not need to use this, you just need to use the black USB to provide power as well as for data connection. So this may not be necessary. The price of this pen display is US $250. If you have a bit more budget, I would actually recommend you get the Artist 13.3, which is US $50 more. And with the larger screen, it's more comfortable to draw on. This screen, for my personal preference, it's a bit small when compared to an A5 writing pad. You can see it's wider, but um, you are essentially drawing on a smaller area. So I feel a bit constrained. I would prefer a larger screen. But um, if you do not have the budget, then this I think is a good compromise. All right, let's take a look at the driver features before we test out the different drawing apps. This is the Mac driver, and this is where you can adjust the settings for the pen. The button on the back of the pen, this is already mapped to the eraser function and there's no way to change it. For the button on the side, you can set specific keyboard shortcuts to it, but I'm just going to leave it with uh, the usual right click. 
to adjust the pressure sensitivity, you have this pressure curve. I prefer using the pressure curve compared to the slider. This is more accurate for me. And this pen supports up to 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, so it's really sensitive, which uh, you shall see later on. The next tab is monitor. So by default, 100% of the screen is mapped to 100% of the desktop. There's no need to change it. And this is where you can assign specific keyboard shortcuts to the six express keys on the left side. You can also assign different functions or keyboard shortcuts to the touch bar. So these are the six express keys. I have already assigned the functions, so I'm not going to change them now. If you are using a dual monitor setup, there is a feature you will need to know and it's hidden here. Let me click on reset customer defined. This is where you can manually adjust the settings or create your own settings. I'm going to click on default hotkey. So this is the list of predefined functions that XP Pen has created. If you want some of these are quick shortcuts, you can just select them. The one to look for is display switch. So when you select this particular feature, this function here, when you click on the express key, when you click on the express key, it's going to jump the cursor from this screen to your other screen, to your other monitor. And when you click the express key again, it's going to jump that cursor back to this screen. Now this feature is crucial and it's implemented very well here. And this is where you can customize the touch bar. XP Pen has created different functions for you to choose from. I have selected zoom in and zoom out and changing of the brush size. You can also create your own keyboard shortcuts. So I have set one of the functions switch to this button here. When I press that button, the touch bar is going to switch to these different functions. If you are a left-handed user, this is where you can change the rotation of the screen so you can click 180 and you can turn the screen around so that the express key go to the other side and this is where you can calibrate to offset the parallax error i have already calibrated the screen by default there is not a lot of parallax because the gap between the glass surface and the actual screen is actually very minimal so those are all the features on the Mac driver. I'm going to show you the Windows driver later on after I show you the graphic apps on Mac. So let's jump to Medibank Paint Pro. So earlier I have assigned a zoom in and zoom out function to the touch bar. So let's test that out. Let me zoom out. Let me zoom in. So this is actually no different from pressing the keyboard shortcut Command Plus and Command Minus. It's not as fluid because that's just how the keyboard shortcut works. But if you use the proper keyboard shortcut, like what I'm doing now, command space bar, you can zoom very fluidly. Let me press the function switch. So now I can adjust the brush size. You can see the brush size changing. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so having six express keys on the side is actually not enough for me. I still use my keyboard. So let me draw some really thin lines to see how sensitive this pen is. I'm barely glancing on the surface of the screen and it's able to register really thin lines. So this pen, it's quite sensitive. Let's try some thin to thick transition. So this is very nice. The lines, they transition from thin to thick very gradually and the curves here, they are very smooth. The screen protector is, well, a bit slippery compared to matte screen protector, but not really that much of an issue when it comes to drawing because after a while you will just get used to it. My overall drawing experience is a positive one because the strokes, they always come out the way I want them to be. Let's try the eraser. I'm actually zooming in using the keyboard instead of the express keys because I'm more comfortable with that. So let me turn this around and the eraser works nicely. 
absolutely no issues with Medibank Paint Pro. So let's jump over to use Photoshop. And now this is Photoshop. I'm able to get the strokes that I want. I can get thin lines very easily. Pressure sensitivity works really well. And it's very accurate. The cursor, it's always directly beneath the pen tip. Let's see if there is any diagonal jitter. So I'm going to draw some diagonal lines very slowly. Let me switch to a black line. So this is about as straight as I can make it to be. And I do not see any jitter. Let me try some quick strokes. Now with Photoshop, sometimes when you create strokes like this, they may not taper as gradually. They may taper a bit abruptly, but here it looks like they taper very nicely, very smoothly. Let's draw some more curves. So the transition from thin to thick and back to thin, it's very smooth and the curves, they are very smooth as well. No angular edges. This is Krita on the Mac. Pressure sensitivity works really well and it's very responsive. Let's try some dots so we can register dots as well. Let me press down a bit harder to get larger dots. Line transition from thin to thick, very smooth, very gradual. Hatching lines, fantastic. This is Clip Studio Paint on the Mac. It's very responsive too. Pressure sensitivity works great. The cursor is always directly beneath the tip. These are the three graphic apps that I have. I'm going to skip them because they all perform quite well with the pen. Pressure sensitivity works with all three. Let's jump over to using the pen display with Windows right now. I have connected this to my Surface Pro 2017. There is no HDMI port on this, so in order to connect this, I have used a mini display port to HDMI adapter that is provided with this pen display. That's great. And the other thing to take note is I have used a black USB port here. I have also used a red USB port there because this tablet, the Surface Pro, this is not able to provide enough power to power on this. So I need to use the red USB to provide the power. Okay, now I'm going to show you the cursor switch that I talked about earlier. All right, now my cursor is on the Surface Pro. I'm going to drag that driver, the Windows driver over to this screen. And I'm going to press this button here to switch the cursor to this screen now. So earlier the cursor was there. When I press the button, the cursor jumps here. If you are using a dual monitor setup and there is no feature that allows you to switch the cursor between screens, I think that's unacceptable. Here the implementation is again perfect. So let's take a look at the Windows driver. Most of the features here are quite similar to the Mac, so I'm just going to talk about the differences. Now there is this little checkbox here that says Windows Ink. If you have problems with pressure sensitivity with certain apps, especially those Windows tablet apps, then maybe you need to uncheck this or check this. And the display setting here, this is also different compared to the Mac. The window driver allows you to adjust the color temperature. You can also adjust the RGB manually. You can change the brightness and contrast here. By the way, you can change the brightness of the pen display using the two buttons here, up and down. But that's the only setting you can change, brightness. Here you can change the brightness and the contrast. And if you are left-handed, this is where you can rotate the screen. I'm just going to leave all this at default. 
And just like the Mac driver, you can customize the express keys as well as the touch bar. So all the settings are on this single page. Let's test out some graphic apps, this time on Windows. This is Medibank Paint Pro version 16. I want to mention the version number because this version it performs very well on this pen display. I can get thin and thick lines very easily. Let's see what happens when I upgrade this to the latest version, version 18. And this is version 18. Can you see what's wrong? So there are some stray strokes. I'm not sure why this happens. But it seems that the two ends of the lines, they will join together for some reason. Oh, now it's fine. But it's not like 100% fine. Take a look at the curves here. There are some jagged edges. This is not very smooth. Not as smooth compared to that on the Mac. Notice the straight stroke again. So there is definitely some problems with version 18 of Medibank Paint Pro with this pen display. That's why I'm still using the previous version. So I had problems with Medibank Paint Pro. So now let's take a look at Photoshop. Photoshop seems to work fine. I can get the lines to taper very nice, very gradually. Let's try the thin and thick. The transition is smooth, the curves are smooth. Photoshop works fine, no problem at all. And the lines, they can taper very nicely. This is Sketchable. This is actually a Windows tablet app. So if you're using this on a tablet, you can use all the finger gestures. You can pan around, rotate, and zoom. But since this pen display doesn't have any touch screen, you do not have access to the finger gestures. All right, it may seem that pressure is working with this app, but actually it's not. The line thickness depends on the speed you are drawing at. So if you draw fast, you're going to get thick lines. If you draw slow, even if you apply a lot of pressure, which is what I'm doing right now, you're going to get thin lines. So slow lines are thin lines. And this is not how it's supposed to behave, which is why earlier on in the video, I talked about the Windows Ink feature. So you have to check box this. And now it should perform normally. So now I'm drawing very lightly and now pressing down hard will give me a thick line. So with certain apps, you have to um, test out the Windows Ink uh, function here. This is Krita on Windows. Pressure sensitivity works really well. Very responsive too. This is Clip Studio Paint on Windows. Let me try the touch bar. So now I can zoom with the touch bar. Let me press the function switch to change brush size. So now I can change the brush size. But notice when I press the function switch for the touch bar, there is no label on the screen, unlike on the Mac, where they, do, where they will tell you which mode you are in. Here on Windows, that is missing, and I find that to be very useful. So Clip Studio Paint on Windows. Seems like there is some lag. I'm not sure if it has got to do with the system that I'm using or if there is some lag with this particular app, but definitely not the problem with the pen display. The last app on Windows that I want to test is Sketchbook Pro. This is a free app, Pressure Works, and this is very responsive. The keyboard shortcuts do not work but the touch bar actually works. So Sketchbook Pro, it has a set of different shortcuts compared to Photoshop. Very responsive, line tapers really well. The transition from thin to thick, 
very smooth too and the curves very smooth. So overall the XP Pen Artist 12 performs quite well with most of the drawing apps that I have tested except for Medibank Paint Pro on Windows which is such a shame because Medibank Paint Pro usually is the app that performs very well with graphic tablets and pen displays. And also with Sketchable, there are some issues, but once you turn on the Windows Ink feature, um, the problem with the pen pressure, it goes away. Overall, my drawing experience on this pen display is a positive one. On Mac, absolutely no problems at all. On Windows, um, the only issue is with Medibank Paint Pro. Generally speaking, the lines, they always come out the way I want them to be. The pen, really sensitive, and this is a very nice pen to hold, very comfortable. I've been using this pen tablet for almost four hours now while making this video, and it is slightly warm on the bottom side, but uh, not warm until you cannot draw on it for extended periods of time. I can definitely work on this for many hours. The last two things I want to talk about is the color. Even though I've color calibrated both screens to look the same, they still do not look the same. Anyway, it's not that big of a problem if you are just working on this pen display. The colors on this, they look all right to me. The other thing is the cable that comes out from the top left. If you are a right-hander, it comes out here. If you are a left-hander, it's going to come out from the bottom right. And there is no way for you to sort of turn this cable down because if the cable goes down like this, it's going to block the buttons here. So um, they could have had the cable come out from here instead. I think it looks better coming out from the middle. It's good that XP Pen has a whole range of pen displays at different sizes and price points. This is probably one of their most affordable ones at US $250. Overall performance is quite good, except for some of the issues that I mentioned earlier with certain apps. So that's all for my detailed review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If I have any updates to my video review, I will put that in the text review. And also, by the way, if you intend to get a pen display like this, I highly recommend you get a laptop stand or you can check out the XP Pen stand, the AC18 that they are selling. I'm not going to review this because it's a, I mean, this is a pretty straightforward product. This will prop up your pen display to make it more comfortable for you to draw it rather than putting the screen down. I can work like this for 10 minutes and I will feel my shoulders aching. So it's not very healthy. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.